A few years ago, Stanford University did a study to see how well students did evaluating online information. Let's start by making fun of the middle schoolers who struggle to identify which were advertisements on this page and which were articles. This is the Slate website homepage. Can you tell which is which? Feel free to pause the video and to rank all three of these as an advertisement or an article. Okay, so most middle schoolers correctly recognize that this is an advertisement, but 80% of them believed that this sponsored content was a real article, not an advertisement. Lots of ads now are meant to look just like articles, and if you did not know that sponsored content or paid content is just another way of saying advertisement, then you also might have thought that this was a actual article. Sponsored or paid means someone else paid to have it included here, and that makes it an advertisement. And websites and publishers are not obligated to fact check advertisements. They just happily collect money for posting them on their site. Let's move on to the high schoolers challenge. Students were shown this photo and the note here about how in March 2011, there was a large nuclear disaster at the Fukushima power plant in Japan. And then they were asked this question, whether the photo provided strong evidence about the conditions near the power plant in Japan. What do you think? Feel free to pause the video and discuss this one, which is a lot trickier than the task they gave to the middle school students. I bet most of you were pretty suspicious about this photo since we are actually talking about how easy it is to trick people with online content. But 80% of the high schoolers in the study thought this photo was strong evidence that nuclear contamination near the Fukushima Japan nuclear plant is causing these really crazy flower mutations. However, this photo does not have a photographer's name, credentials, or really any other useful information to go with it. And I can tell by the user's name who posted it that they are definitely just using it to get some attention for other causes. And I initially just thought this picture was some pretty good Photoshop work. You're going to find a lot of things on Google Images that are photoshopped and completely false, sometimes intentionally misleading, sometimes just as a joke. Never pull a picture directly from Google Images. First, look at the source of the website and actually go there to check for a citation. If a photo doesn't have a citation and you can't verify its authenticity, you have no way of knowing if it's real and you should not use it. And like I said, when I saw this picture, I immediately thought someone just photoshopped it, but it's not. Just because these are actual flowers does not mean that this is good evidence of nuclear contamination in Japan. More on that in just a second, but first let's look at the challenge the college students got. And not just any college students, Stanford college students. Stanford is among the most selective universities in the world, and you must be extraordinarily smart to get in. This task is gonna be a lot harder for you than for them because we will be just looking at a side-by-side -side scroll. But the Stanford students in the study were asked to rate the reliability of these two websites. They got 10 minutes to click anywhere they wanted or Google anything they wanted. And they were asked to read one article on each website that happened to be about the same topic. So just based on what you can see as I scroll, do you think both websites are reputable? Do you think one is and one isn't? If you think they both look good, does one seem a little bit more reliable than the other? Again, this is a good time to pause the video and discuss this. The majority of the Stanford students felt both websites were reputable, but they did rate the article on this site a little bit more reliable because it had some more statistics. To make their decisions, students said they looked at the URL, both of them are .orgs, they looked for facts and figures, um, they looked for authors, and some of them even up to their game and went to the About Us pages, which are all things that we teach you to do when you're evaluating websites. And if you do just those things, both of these websites look okay. However, not a single one of those super smart Stanford students thought to Google the names of each of these organizations. If they had, they would have discovered that lots of places identify the American College of Pediatrics 
as an anti-LGBT group that intentionally uses a name very similar to the American Academy of Pediatrics to confuse people and to promote their very controversial viewpoints. Pretty much, you should not trust anything you read online unless you also spend time researching the source. And that is a ton of work. And that is the main difference between information that is free online and information that is in a paid for database. If you don't want to have to Google check every single source you find online to see if it's considered legitimate or a biased source, then you must do the vast majority of your research inside a research database. Databases only allow information to be included that is fact checked for you. But what it means is that someone else besides the author of the article or the photographer has checked it for accuracy. Let's use the picture of the mutated daisies to show you kind of what a fact checker does, but I will be your fact checker. First, I wanted to find out who took this picture and where it was taken. I learned that it was taken by someone named San Kaido, and it was taken about 100 miles southwest of the Fukushima nuclear plant. Now, 100 miles seems pretty far. Here is the actual location of the nuclear plant. And over here, is where the photo was taken according to its GPS tag. So if the flower mutations were actually caused by radiation from the accident at the nuclear plant, I would expect to find a lot more of these mutated flowers closer to that nuclear power plant. Also, if I switch my base map to terrain, I see some more issues. Um, groundwater is the primary mechanism that spreads radiation and soil contaminants. Uh, water flows downhill. So I would expect groundwater spread to be limited mostly to these lowland areas. Water is not going to wash the nuclear contaminants up these mountains and up these mountains and up and over these mountains. You get the idea. More fact-checking research led me to this National Geographic article about this photo where a plant expert said that flower mutations like this are caused by a whole lot of other things besides just chemicals and radiation. Apparently mutations like this are not that uncommon. Here is a similar looking flower that lives in a cow pasture in Idaho. Given that a whole bunch of mutations like this haven't been found closer to the nuclear spill site, it seems more likely that something else is causing these mutations or that they're just natural mutations. It took me several minutes to just explain to you my fact checking process, but it took me a whole lot longer than that to complete. And if you don't want to have to do all this fact checking for all of your sources and pictures, then you're going to love databases because they take care of all of that for you, which is why in college, most of your professors require that all of your research comes out of a database. So as a result, you're going to use a great database today for all of your research called the U.S. History and Context Database. I want you all to open your Chromebooks and I want you to go to the RVHS library webpage. It is linked off the RV homepage under Academics. Once you get to the library webpage, I want you to click on Pathfinders and choose your U.S. History page because I have done some work for you and put all of the resources there. Please pause the video until everybody gets to this page. I have the link to the database we're going to use right here and I did search all of these topics on the list and noted the keywords that worked well for finding relevant information. First we need to get into the database and you will need a password for that. You can use your own public library card number or click on this document here to use one of mine. Only 15 people can use each one at a time, so you may have to try more than one of these. So choose a login and get yourselves logged into the US History and Context Database. Pause the video until everyone is logged in and sees the database homepage. When searching a database, you're typically going to need to try a lot of different short search strings. Try both broad and really specific short phrases, never put in sentences. So for this project, my initial thought was that Asian American civil rights would be a really good search string. But when I skimmed through my results, I did not find anything that was really specifically mentioning Asian Americans. Um, so I decided to instead broaden my search term. I want you all to do this one with me. Start typing Asian Americans in the search blank. 
If you do not hit enter right away, some suggested similar searches are gonna pop up that you could decide to use. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes not. I did not find any of these particularly helpful and I really wanna stick with a big broad topic of Asian Americans first. So go ahead and click the magnifying glass or just hit enter so we can view our search results. These are all of the different types of search results that we get. Reference means pretty much a short section from a book or an ebook, and they tend to be the best area to start for school projects. So go ahead and click the link next to reference. There are 282 results. We'll talk about how to manage that big number in the next tip. So tip two is always scroll and skim an entire page of results before you choose any. Databases do not seem to accurately rank results as well as Google does, and often the best stuff is not at the top of the page. I always scroll down one entire page of search results. So when I'm scrolling down a results page, I'm looking at the titles to see which seem very specific and relevant to my topic, and I'm also looking at the book that they came out of. And when I get about three quarters of the way down this first page of results, I see sections from two civil rights sets. And since civil rights is the topic of this project, I'm gonna start with these. Even though they're near the very bottom of the search results on the first page, they're gonna be the ones I read. And go ahead with me and click on this Asian Americans article from the Civil Rights in America set. If the article is more than about a page long, over on the right, you're gonna see an article contents section with links. It tells you what the main topics are in this writing without even needing to scroll through it. And you can just click on any one of these topics to be taken right to that section. It's very useful. There's some other useful research helpers on the right-hand side of the page, including a link at the top to more articles like this in the database. Down here are also some suggested linked related subjects. I feel like those results on that last page that I skimmed through were actually pretty good. Um, if I didn't, I might click on one of these related subjects to see if I got a better list of results. But my results were really good. This article is fantastic. It has a ton of information that I know I'm going to be able to use in my project. And as soon as you decide you're going to use some information from this article in your project, I want you to do two things. First, go to the top of the page and click on the Send to Google Drive icon. This will send a copy of this article to your Google Drive so you don't have to come back into the database every time you want to read it. Next, I want you to copy the MLA citation to a Works Cited page. You're gonna find the MLA citation done for you. It's at the bottom of all of the articles in the database, or it's just right here at the top. You just click this Cite button. All you need to do is copy and paste this into a Google Doc for your Works Cited page. You're still gonna to need to do some basic formatting before you turn this in. It needs to be double-spaced, gotta have hanging indents, needs to be alphabetized, all that good stuff. But the actual hard work of creating the citations is done for you completely by the database, which is yet another reason why I love them. Let's go back to the database tab and we're gonna close this citation window and we're going to view some of the other results by clicking this arrow in the top left. So if you need to read for more information, you're just gonna go right back through your search results and visit other ones that look promising. There's literally hundreds of results we haven't even skimmed through yet. But right now, I want us to peek together at the primary sources. Primary sources are items that were written or taken or created by someone who lived the event or experienced it or witnessed it. They're often pictures. If you click this document type filter over here, you'll also see that many are speeches. You'll find some poetry and interviews and again, sometimes photographs. Just like before, if you want to view an item, you just click on it. The um, citations are down at the bottom and you can send anything over to your Google Drive. This U.S. History in Context database is going to have a ton of information for each and every one of the topics that are on your list. And I know this because I have tested them all. And if you go back to the library website, remember I listed all of the keyword searches that I tested that gave me the most promising information. So start with those. I also listed some good places to look for primary sources over here on the right in case you don't have a lot of luck in the database for those. And here's a formatting guide and an example works cited page. So those resources and these keywords should give you an excellent start. But like anything else, 
Research is about practice and persistence. So start with the keyword searches that I suggested, but definitely try some other similar ones if you're not finding good results. Feel free to come ask me for additional ideas or help if you get stuck.